Yo, what's going on, FG fam? Welcome to episode number 23 of the Miami Marlins franchise here on MLB The Show 21. Today, we got another offseason for you. We are getting ready to get into season number three of this franchise. Moving pretty quickly. I want to get through like at least 10 years if we can. So that's why I've kind of been speeding through these first couple of seasons while we build up the team that we are looking to have to potentially make a run to the World Series. If you were a big fan of the Tigers franchise, that was something that took a couple of years for us to really make an impact, and it was season number three where we started to do that, so that is what we're looking to do here in this franchise, and this offseason is a big one, so let's see what kind of pickups we can make. Let's see the updates on all of your prospects as well as a little bit of information as to if you'll be able to potentially see your prospect play our team next year. We'll see. I have some of that inside information as I do try to record ahead. Also, wearing the Richie McGowan shirt. So there we go. You know the Go to the Tigers franchise. If you didn't watch that, make sure you click on the end screen at the end of this video and start binging that series because it is probably one of the goaded series on the channel. With all that being said, let's get into it, so don't go anywhere. And here we are, starting the full off season of season number two. We are going into season number three. We got to hire some coaching, hitting coaches for hire. We are looking to see who we can offer a deal to. Hugo Carpenter looking pretty good. So I think we'll put an offer on the table for him. One and a half million dollars a year. Hopefully he'll accept. Farm director. We have got to get a new one. Our double-A and triple-A squads are way better than they've been performing. So we will now bring in Iapoche, Anthony Iapoche, for that role. He goes ahead and accepts for a three-year deal. And so Hugo Carpenter joins as well with a three-year deal. So both coaching hires work out. Now looking for some arbitration here. Pablo Lopez, we're going to offer him $2.3 million if you're keeping track. Sandy Alcantara for around the same. And then Eliezer Hernandez for $2.15 million. We'll see. I don't think that's too expensive for those three pitchers. Also don't know that it's entirely super cheap. Dylan Floro also looking for arbitration. We're going to give some to Lucas Sims as we get him an offer. And then John Curtis, relatively cheap at five hundred and twenty grand. we will see if he accepts that. Jorge Alfaro for $3.2 million of arbitration. I don't know that he'll be on the team, though in spring training we'll see we might look to make a couple of deals with guys that are in arbitration that are getting maybe more money than they might be worth as ryan mcmahon gets an offer from us in arbitration john birdie for a million dollars i think is a freaking steal taylor rogers is another guy that we are looking for here in free agency we are looking to bolster of course the relief pitching and then second base is pretty much a weak starting lineup spot. So maybe if we can get a guy like Whit Merrifield, it will be full. Chad Green, the top reliever on the market. He'll go to the A's. Clevenger to the Nationals. And J-Ram, Jose Ramirez going from the Indians to the Rays. Jose Barrios, a top starting pitcher on the market going in our division to the Mets so they are really bolstering their pitching staff Seth Lugo though will be leaving the Mets and we're gonna see if we can bring him in as he's not too excited to resign with the Mets and he will become a Miami Marlins so our first big signing is Seth Lugo Roberto Osuna was a guy 
I didn't feel entirely comfortable with in games that I had to pitch with him. So bringing in Sterling Olander and D.L. Hall. So there you go. That's a user prospect coming in. Joaquin Diaz is a guy that we are, will trade away as well. A C potential center fielder. We're able to get Ash Laser. Another user prospect coming into the team. So a couple of users now, including Brandon Hernandez. At right field, he was a Ray. We have to give up Yarar Encarnacion, but Encarnacion really uh, stalling at the edge of being able to come up to the majors. Colton Wong becomes a Minnesota twin. Aaron Judge to the A's, so they get a couple of former Yankees in Judge and Chad Green. We'll see if that works out for their playoff potential. There's a repeat right there. Roberto Osuna traded away to the Orioles for Sterling Olander and D.L. Hall. I think that's a pretty good deal. Now we're going to try to get Araldis Chapman. Don't know if it's going to work. Ken Giles will go over to the Boston Red Sox. And Chapman will accept a deal with the Dodgers for one year, $3.8 million. So that doesn't work out for us. Seattle claims Dylan Floro, who we put on waivers. And then Boston claims Nick Neidert. We had to put guys on waivers because we needed to take dudes off the 40-man to get some other guys on the 40-man. Sonny Gray will become a Washington National we also made an offer to Jake Cronenworth. We'll see if he ends up with the team. Andrew Benatendi will go to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Big money for him. Whit Merrifield with $13.7 million a year over four to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Byron Buxton gets a pretty much a max deal in this game for six years to the Chicago Cubs. Tim Anderson becomes a Cincinnati Red, and Joey Gallo getting $26.1 million for five years to replace Michael Conforto in right field. Cattell Marte becoming a Cleveland Indian out in center field. He's only getting $7.7 .7 million a year. Lourdes Gariel Jr. gets traded straight up for Corey Kluber. I think the Mets get the better end of that deal, and their outfield looking pretty sick with Lourdes Gurriel and Joey Gallo. Eugenio Suarez, a Eugenio Suarez, getting traded from the Reds to the Twins for Jorge Polanco and the user closer, Franz Kelio Hobravovich. We get to the Rule 5 draft. We'll see how that goes. Look at that. Seven picks in the first seven, and then there was another three later on. And then another couple of picks sprinkled here and there throughout the first round. Nobody went in the second or third round of it. But we'll take a closer look. Logan Gilbert is one, and one of our guys, Santis Sanchez. Didn't want to lose him, but I didn't have any room to put him on the 40-man, so maybe we'll get him back at a later date. Maybe we won't. We'll see what happens. Lamonte Wade was another guy that got selected in this Rule 5 draft. Ray Aguero, these are guys that I recognize, but they weren't our players. Kenta Maeda getting traded to the Oakland Athletics from the Minnesota Twins. Francesco Alessio and Manuel Margot moving over to Minnesota in the deal. Lizer Hernandez wins his arbitration for $2.9 million. So we're paying like an extra $800,000 in that particular arbitration deal. I'm not entirely upset about this, but he might be somebody we may look to trade. John Birdie wins his arbitration for $1.2 million, so he's getting like another $200,000. No big deal there. Lucas Sims gets the win of the arbitration for two point four, million, almost $2.5 million. $3.1 million is what Pablo Lopez gets, but he probably deserves that. John Curtis, almost a million dollars on his arbitration. Sandy Alcantara for 2.6, which is probably what he deserves, if we're being honest. 
And then Jorge Alfaro for 3.8. He wins his arbitration. I was willing to give him 3.2. He wins it for 3.8. His money is pretty high. And then Ryan McMahon wins his as well. So we're looking to get rid of Eliezer Hernandez, John Curtis. And then we throw in Lewin Diaz. And that brings in Riley Green to the team. Then Mejia, we somehow lost him. He, We didn't give him arbitration. We did offer him a contract, but I guess he did not accept it. So he ended up a Tampa Bay Ray, but we went ahead and got him back. Ryan McMahon, we were looking to dump off his $2.8 million salary. And the Indians offered us Timmy Klink, so another user coming on into the team. Thad Ward is a guy offered up by the Tigers, and we could use any A potential reliever who could potentially become a big-time guy in the 7th, 8th, or ninth inning at any point in any kind of World Series team we may build. Franklin Barreto and Kareem Askew are going to bring in a couple of decent prospects here, so we will go ahead and take that. Kyle Seeger is a guy we're going to offer a contract to, as well as Didi Gregorius. They will be bench players, utility players, pinch hitters, all that kind of stuff. We go through spring training. It comes to an end with us with a record of 9-15. and 15. Not exactly what we were planning on being in spring training, but let's see how everyone did. Cronenworth hits 246 with a homer, 215 for Anderson, 209 for Eloy Jimenez. Didi Gregorius bats 080. John Birdie 187. Mike Trout batted 203 in spring training. These are really abysmal numbers. 169 may be nice, but it's also not nice for Michael Conforto. Just a lot of terrible play. Alcantara had an 884 ERA in spring training, 794 for Taylor Rogers. Just some really horrible play across the board in spring training. I think you need to throw these numbers in the garbage. I don't think this is what the team's going to be like, and if it is, it may need to be blown up. We're going to go over some of the prospects from years past as Roger Dominguez, one of those blue chip guys. He's in double A for the Phillies as a 66 overall. You may remember William Hanna. He is also in double A now for the Detroit Tigers. I think he's moved around a little bit here. So for the Tigers, a potential William Hanna looking pretty good. Hopefully he will make his call to the majors in the next couple of years. Miles Usby, another one of those blue chip guys, but he's in the majors for the Brewers. We're going to play him a couple of times this year. Gino Scholes for the Pirates. He's behind Kevin Newman. So we'll see if he gets that call to the majors this year or next year at some point. Daryl O'Malley for the Diamondbacks is kind of buried way down. He's like second to last pitching for them. Same thing with Darren Montag, but at least they're in double A. They'll get a little bit better this season. Those blue chip guys taking a little long to develop. Robbie McDermott, the closer for the Giants. He's in there at double A. Roger Williamson at center field for the Tigers. He's also in double A. Thad Guillory moved around a little bit. He's now with the Giants organization, and he'll be in double A as well. He's a top prospect as well, so we'll see what happens with him. Emil Sosa of the Astros, another top prospect in double A. Nate Townsend, though, doesn't look like he's going to get any playing time. The man out of the Florida Gators. Milt Bauer looks like they're going to sit him in single A as well and not play him. That's an interesting choice. Same with Adam Malone. They've got everybody else playing but but him, and that's kind of weird. Mitchell Mullen, former number one overall pick, is in triple A. He's already better than O'Neal Cruz for the Pirates, though, so we'll see what happens with him. Roman Brassard is in single A, so they're just looking to make him a little better. Leo Rodriguez in single A as well. Perry Fold, also in single A. Looks like he could pitch in double or triple, but the Rockies are just like, nah. Nino Guzman in triple A for the Royals. And we, Enrique Perez, single A for the Texas Rangers. One guy, a former blue chip, Bobby O'Connor. We are going to go ahead and 
pick him up in free agency because he's just kind of sitting there. So Bobby O'Connor, welcome to the squad. Now looking at some of the past picks for our Marlins, Ryan Muller looking like a 75 in AAA. Richie Hawkins also in AAA is a 66 now. Ben Guillen, we're starting him out in AAA this year. He played a little bit in the major league level, but if we get with a birdie, he may come up. Bobby Robinson in AAA as well. Alexis Sanchez will start the year in the majors as a 76 C potential. He'll probably be a long reliever out of the pen and spot starter when we need him to. Nicholas Boucher will start off as the ace of the staff in AAA. Scott Dunham, one of our former selections, is no longer with us. And Joe Hagan will start in AA this year, our former first-round pick of last season. We'll see who we'll get this season. Andres Del Villar, a nice little steal, will also be in double A with him. Julian Gore, double A for him as a starting pitcher, so we'll see how he can do. Bobby Ashburn, currently not getting any playing time. That could change throughout the season, though. He'll be in single A, and hopefully we can get him to be a little bit better. Starting pitcher Diego Hernandez is now with the Erie Seawolves as we went ahead and shipped him off for some other things along with Kareem Askew. So there you go. They're both with the Tiger organization. They'll both be in double A and they'll both be with the Erie Seawolves. Now we look at some of your prospects, which I'm sure you have all been waiting for. Jack Dawson in the majors for the L.A. Dodgers. Ryan Chambers will be in double A for the Braves. Michael McHugh is now with the White Sox organization, and he will be starting in triple A this season. Ethan Smith in single A, even though he's pretty much good and could pretty much play in triple A at this point. Timmy Klink is with us. Bobby Valentine in triple A. Andrew Pierce in single A. Derek Vance is in double A. Juan Ramada is in single A. Giancarlo Garcia, single A. Abel Alvarado, major leagues for the Pirates. Walty Snowman is in single A. Zachary Goldstein is in double A with the Royals. Double A as well for Tyrell Goodman with the Diamondbacks organization. Some of these guys we will get to see this season as we are scheduled to play some of them. Will Blanford, don't know why he's in single A. He should be playing somewhere. Same with Keith Jackson and Chad Taylor, to be honest with you. That could change throughout the year, though. Tay-Tay Hawkins is in single A, as is Michael Kingley. And again, I believe that those guys are good enough to play somewhere. Harry Eisenberger is in single A as well. Remy Ellis is in double A along with his counterpart, Johnny Nova. So we got a couple of dudes there in the White Sox organization battling it out in double A. Ryan Baker is in single A somehow, even though he's a 69 overall. Nice and has a ton of power. Ash Laser is with us and he'll be in triple A with Sterling Olander. So there you go, two users in AAA at first base for our Marlins organization. Brandon Ramsey, double A for the Diamondbacks. Single A for Jack Saxon, the starting pitcher in the Washington National Organization. Triple A for Brandon Hernandez, he is in our organization. We obviously just traded for him this offseason, and we'll see what he can do. Ben McCutcheon will start in Triple A for the Reds organization. At center field, and France Kelio Hobravovich will be in AAA as well for the Reds. They're both playing together now. Ozzy Blunt, double A for the Royals. So, some of the users that were left behind, Alexander Quisnell is available, and he will now join our Miami Marlins. And this is why I like to leave some roster spots open. Just in case some people have been given up on. There's Jeriel Aponte. We'll pick him up as well. Mike Wells is available in free agency. These are guys that are were just not offered contracts again. Here's Miles Burrow. We're going to give them some new life. We're going to bring them in. We're going to see if we can develop them in the minors. They may all have to be in single A, and they will have to be in single A. There are guys like Derek Hare who are not getting playing time as, long, as well as Juan Valido, just because our minors are pretty stacked. But if we can develop these guys using the training function, 
we will definitely have spots available for them in the future as they get a little bit better. Now that we have a 91-man roster, we're ready to go for the season. Taking a little look at the preview, we are going to play the Brewers early and often. We're going to play the Pirates a couple of times this year. So we'll get a chance to see some of these uh, prospects that are now in the major leagues. Looking at our lineup for this season, Jake Cronenworth, Brian Anderson, Mike Trout, Eloy Jimenez, Michael Conforto, Javi Baez, DHing Didi Gregorius against righties, Bobby Bradley, and Jorge Alfaro still with the squad. Did not give up on him just yet. Against lefties, we got John Birdie taking that leadoff role. Anderson, Trout, Baez, Conforto, Jimenez, Kyle Seeger will DH. Bobby Bradley and Jorge Alfaro. So a couple of slight changes in the lineup. Nothing too wild. Seager will play third base with no DH against lefties. Because Seager just bats supposedly better. Then in our pitching rotation, we got Syndergaard as the ace. Pablo Lopez, Sandy Alcantara, Sixto Sanchez, and Max Meyer. Long relief, we got Alexis Sanchez and Randy Dobnak. We have Garrett Crochet, Taylor Rogers, and Lucas Sims in that setup or in that middle relief role right now. Setup, we got Seth Lugo and Guillermo Marquez. And we were able to bring in Craig Kimbrell on a pretty cheap one year deal to potentially be our closer, but we could always change that as time goes on. Maybe Rogers takes the role. As a matter of fact, we're going to put Rodgers in setup over Marquez right now and see what he can do. So, first game opening day said to be Aaron Nola versus Noah Syndergaard on opening day. Let me know your predictions for maybe the score in the comments section below. We'll likely get through a couple weeks of the season in the opening day episode. I hope you guys are excited for that. If you are, please make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for the love of franchise content because that is what we bring to the table here. Links to the Discord and the Twitch are in the description below. Make sure you join that. Become a bigger member of the community. And I will see you guys next time. If you want to see some more franchise, make sure you click right here to see some more franchise. I feel you face some